Hello again, everybody. Pastor Brian here. Just wanted to bring you another promise from God's Word. The, this past year has been really quite the year. I never ex experienced anything quite like this. Uh, a lot of people have passed this year, and some due to COVID, unfortunately. Uh, we just had a meeting yesterday with a very grieving mother and father. Their son died from COVID this past week, and we're planning his memorial service. And uh, obviously you know that both Jackie and my mom's passed away this past year, and there's just been a lot of loss uh, going on in 2021. And yet I've been asking the Lord to help me to see the gains, help me see what he's doing in spite of the loss and the grief that so many people are going through at this time. And the Lord really brought me to the whole topic and subject of death and dying and what God has to say in the scriptures about it. And I just want to bring two portions of scripture to you today. The first one is found actually in the book of Isaiah, the 25th chapter, beginning at verse 6. And this is a promise that God has for us who are his children. And he talks about this mountain of the Lord where, where God dwells and where he wants to bring us to. And he says, but here on this mountain, God of the angel armies will throw a feast for all the people of the world. All the people of the world are included in this feast. It, it's made available to them, let's put it that way. They're, it's made available to them. And it's a feast of the finest foods, a, a feast with vintage wines, and a feast of seven courses, a feast lavish with gourmet desserts. Sounds like a big weight gain to me, but I think in this particular situation, maybe this is calorie-less food, I don't know. But it's a wonderful feast. And here on this mountain, God will banish the pall of doom hanging over all people. And you might ask the question, well, what in the world is this pall of doom that hangs over all people? Well, you know what it is. It's the pall of death. It's this gloom of death, the fear of death. The shadow of doom darkening all nations. All nations on the earth have a darkening cloud over them. And it's the increase in death and destruction. Yes, he will banish death forever. What a promise. He will banish death forever. And God will wipe away the tears from every face. Everybody that has shed a tear because of the loss of life, loss of a loved one, loss of a friend, those tears will be wiped away. But not just in a, in a system, systematic line of angels coming and wipe away. It says, God will wipe away each and every one of our tears. He will look into your face and my face and the tears that we've shed over the loss of life. He will wipe away our tears. He goes on to say that he'll remove every sign of disgrace and from his people, wherever they are, oh yes, God says so. That whatever disgrace may have happened to you, whatever false accusation maybe has happened to you, and inside of you, you may not have died outwardly physically, but inside of you there has been a dying in your heart, in your spirit, in your dreams, in your thoughts of the future and tomorrow. God is going to touch those tears, and he is going to say, that the disgrace is all removed. He will remove every sign of disgrace. Wow, what a promise that all signs of disgrace will be removed. And then I'd like to go to the book of Hebrews. The Hebrews, uh, writer of Hebrews has just some wonderful parallelisms with uh, Jesus as our high priest and so forth. And he begins in chapter two, verse 14 by saying this, since the children of God are made of flesh and blood, it's only logical that the Savior himself took on flesh and blood in order to rescue them by his death. By embracing death, by taking that death into himself, he destroyed the devil's hold on death and freed all who cower through life, scared to death of death. Because of the death of Jesus and of course the resurrection, we who at times have been scared to death of death, People have said, I'm so afraid of dying. There's no need to fear that anymore. It's not this Paul that is hanging over us any longer because Jesus has 
overcome death with his death and resurrection. It's obvious, of course, that he didn't go into all this trouble for just angels. He didn't do it for angels. He did it for us. It was for people like you and like me, like people like us, children of Abraham. And that's why he had to enter into every detail of human life. Then, when he came before God as high priest to get rid of people's sins, he would have already experienced all of that himself. And of course, one of the consequences of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The payment of sin, the recompense for sin is death. And he took our sins, and along with our sins, the potential death that the enemy wants to bring into our lives. So he would have already experienced all this himself, all the pain, all the testing, and would be able to help wherever help is needed. So do you need help today? Are you fearful of dying? Are you full of grief because of the death of a loved one? And that grief is normal, and yet it doesn't have to completely paralyze our lives. Grief is like a jar that we hold in at times, but then we can put it back up on the shelf and go about our day. And there are moments where we need to take that jar down off the shelf and hold it again, and that's okay because this grief we carry through the loss of friends and loved ones is proportional to how much we love them. And when you have loved someone deeply, there's going to be a loss, and that loss will be carried throughout all of your life. But someday in the future, on the mountain of the Lord, when he gives us this feast of seven courses and lavish desserts, he's going to wipe away all of our tears, never to weep anymore. And we will be reunited with friends and family and loved ones who have believed in Jesus. And so I encourage you today, it's okay to sorrow over the loss of a loved one or friend, but you know what? The sting doesn't have the sting it had before Jesus came. It's kind of a stingless bee. And so today we look forward to the future where there will be no more death, no more dying. But in this world, while we have this life, there will be death and there will be dying but it doesn't have to sting like it did prior to the coming of Jesus. He's promised to us a life that will never end. And when we actually die in this life, we just lay down our tents here and go to a permanent tent that will never wear out. So aren't you thankful today that we have the promise of life eternal with the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm so glad to share this with you today. I hope you're encouraged. We've gone through a lot of death and dying this past year, and there may be even more in the future. I'm sure there will be. But we have a hope in our hearts that it doesn't have to be such a hopeless death, such a hopeless pain, such a hopeless grief. We don't grieve as those who have no hope. We grieve because of the loss, but we also look forward to that day where we will hear the trumpet sound, and the dead in Christ will be raised up, and we who are alive will be caught up together to meet them in the air and to forever be with the Lord. So encourage one another today with these words. May your heart be encouraged as well. God bless you. Have a most wonderful day. Hope to see you soon. Come out to church or catch us on live stream. Make sure you drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you. Hope you are well. Take care.